All right. With that, we will call the Ways and Means Committee hearing together for uh, today, Wednesday, October 28th. Uh, please call the roll. Alderman Davis. Present. Alderman Vaccaro. Alderman Howard. Alderman Tamika Hubbard. Yeah, Joe. Alderman Murphy. Here. Alderman Spencer. Alderman Muhammad. Present. Alderman Odenberg. Present. Alderman <coughs> Pam Boyd. Alderman Shamine Hubbard. Here. Chairman Vollmer. Present. Alderman Vaccaro, Alderman Howard, Alderman, Alderman Tamika Hubbard, Alderman Spencer. Present. Alderman Pam Boyd. You have seven present, a quorum is present. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, we will hold excuse Alderman to the end of the meeting because I know uh, Alderman Vaccaro has called me there. Some Alderman are stuck in another meeting. They'll be joining us when they can. Uh, we'll go to approval of the minutes for Tuesday, October 6th. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. A so move. I'll move. Second. Second. All right. Uh, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Davis. Aye. Alderman Vaccaro, Alderman Howard, Alderman Tamika Hubbard, Alderman Murphy. Aye. Alderman, Alderman Spencer. Aye. Alderman Muhammad. Aye. Alderman Odenberg. Aye. Alderman Pam Boyd. Alderman Shamine Hubbard. Aye. Chairman Vollmer. Aye. You have seven aye votes. All right. With your vote, we've approved the minutes of October 26, 2020. We'll now move to item five and uh, board bills for review. And the first board bill up will be uh, board bill 98. The sponsor is uh, Alderman John Collins Muhammad. Please proceed, Alderman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I will not be long. I will be brief. I appreciate the committee's uh, time. Board Bill 98 is simple in its form and its structure. It creates a special business district uh, in the 21st Ward with four neighborhoods, uh, primarily uh, the O'Fallon neighborhood and Pembroke's neighborhood. And this will allow, this will allow my ward to uh, continue and undertake uh, ongoing beautification efforts with raising uh, this tax levy on residents uh, uh, on a property tax. Uh, so with that, Mr. Chairman, I would ask the committee's favorable uh, uh, approval uh, and consent for Board Bill 98. I will entertain questions if there are any. I know uh, I have a couple of uh, residents who would like to speak uh, on Board Bill 98, uh, but that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Thank you, Alderman. We will. Uh, we do have two speakers signed up, so we will uh, take advantage of that, and we will call uh, speaker number one, Amber Cole. Are you with us, Amber? Do we ever signed on? No, we do not. No, she's not here. Okay. Number two, uh, Abdul Abdul, uh, President of Fallon Neighborhood Association, he signed on. He's here. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, please feel free to proceed, sir. Uh, good afternoon, uh, uh, committee. And um, uh, really, I'm speaking in favor of the bill uh, and support of this. Um, as president of the O'Fallon Neighborhood Association, this has uh, been an issue that uh, we have been talking about probably for the past three years. And uh, we've talked about having uh, some form of me uh, mechanism uh, to really fill in some of those services that quite frankly, the community has been lacking. And this is a opportunity for us to get some of those services that we need, such as trash pickup, um, safety and security issues to be able to uh, address those, but also other amenities that are key to the stabilization of the community. Uh, so as a neighborhood association, this is something that we discussed uh, for several years and uh, there was um, really unanimous consent uh, regarding regarding this and uh, was part of what uh, 
we as a body uh, would wanted to see. And so we do thank our aldermen for uh, working with us to help us uh, be able to put this to a vote of our residents and uh, be able to uh, move forward. Thank you. All right, sir. Thank you very much. What we'll do is uh, I'll go around uh, by seniority. And if you have questions of either the sponsor or the speaker, please specify which and uh, direct your questions in, in that manner. So we'll start with Alderwoman Davis. Any questions of either? No questions, sir. All right, thank you. Alderman Carl Howard Hubbard, are not present. We will go to uh, Alderman Murphy. Any questions of either? Uh, yeah, just, uh, well, maybe two. Uh, to the sponsor, um, have you set a, a tax rate that you're going to put to the constituents? Alder Muhammad, are... Alder Muhammad. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm no. sorry. Oh my God. I'm sorry. Alder, I'm sorry. Alder, Go Alder ahead. Murphy had a she had a question as to have you set a, a rate of tax that you're going to be put, proposing in this? Is it in the, in the bill or? It or is in the bill. It is at 75 cents. Uh, uh, was that Alder Muhammad Murphy? Yes. yes. 75 cents. Okay. So, or 75% because I thought it was a percent thing. Okay. And and I I wish you the best mm. of luck. I said um, it's yeah. seventy five cents on the one hundred dollars assessed value. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes Mister Chair. Okay. Thank you. That was my only question. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Alder Woman. We'll move on to Alder Woman Spencer. Any questions of the sponsor or the speaker? I have no questions. Um, good to see you, Abdul. And uh, it's a it's a good thing to recognize that in order to. Have this have many of our neighborhoods have their basic functions. You mentioned trash pickup and uh, security issues. Um, that a special tax would be needed, but I appreciate the community coming together on this. And um, sounds like a good, a good bill. All right. No questions. Thank you, Alder Woman. Actually, uh, we move Alderman Oldenburg. Any questions? The sponsor of the speaker. Uh, no questions. Alderman, good to see you have neighborhood association support. Sounds like you've got resident support, so good luck. Thank you, Alderman. All right, Alderman Boyd, I see you've joined us. Do you have any questions of uh, Alderman Muhammad or Mr. No Abdullah? Questions. All right, thank you very much. Alderman Clark Hubbard, any questions of either? No questions. Good to see you, Abdullah and, and Alderman John Muhammad. I'm glad to see tools like this now being used north of Delmar. Thank All you. right. We have some extraneous noise. I think someone needs to mute something somewhere. That might be me. I just got on. All right. Joe, you never let us down. All right. Uh, Alma McCarles, since you've joined us, do you uh, care to have any questions of the sponsor or the speaker? No, no, thank you. All right. Now you have Alderwoman Howard or Hubbard joined us, Tamika? No? Okay. I have no questions. Uh, it's always good. This puts something to the vote for the neighbors. Special business district can be a very fine thing when used properly. So with that, uh, I'll entertain a motion uh, for Board Bill 98. I move that we pass Board Bill 98 with a due pass recommendation. Thank you. Second, man. Okay. Thank okay. you. All right. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Alderwoman Davis. Alderwoman Davis. Okay. Alderman Vaccaro. Aye. Aye. Alderman Howard. Alderman Tamika Hubbard. Alderman Murphy. Aye. Alderman Spencer. Aye. Alderman Muhammad. Aye. Alderman Odenberg. Aye. Aye. Alderman Pam Boyd. Aye. Alderman Shamine Hubbard. Aye. Chairman Ballmer. Aye. Alderman Davis. Aye. <laughs> Alderman Howard. Alderman Tamika Hubbard. You have 10 aye votes. All right, with your vote, you have passed out board bill 98 with a due pass recommendation. And thank you, committee members. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you, Alderman. We'll move to item number two, board bill 151. 
Uh, Mr. Alderman Oldenburg and John Collins Muhammad are the co sponsors. Alderman Oldenburg, I believe you're handling this, so please proceed. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if, if it's all right with you and the committee, the, the way I'd like to quickly proceed is just frame this from a historical perspective, just remind everybody uh, what the earnings tax is. I'm sure everyone's familiar with it. But then um, also to, to put underscore its greater significance, I have uh, Mr. Paul Payne in the budget office put together a presentation that should be in everybody's Google Drive. If not, I can send it to you just to walk through the, the impact, uh, the, the significant impact that the earnings has as a source of revenue to the city. And, the city. and then I know there are a couple of speakers probably signed up and we could probably address them. So if, if that's okay, the order I'd, I'd like to proceed. No, certainly, please proceed, Mr. Payne. Thank you. Well, I was just gonna frame it real quick, Paul, okay. um, is that I think, again, everyone is familiar with what the earnings tax is. As you may recall, in November of 2010, uh, the, the great citizens of uh, the state of Missouri enacted Proposition A, which says every five years we have to come into uh, renewing the earnings tax, the earnings tax, which was originally um, uh, granted to us by uh, the state of Missouri in the 40s, I believe, as a way to boost revenue after the Great Depression as a half cent sales tax, or, I'm sorry, as a half cent income tax. Then later in the 50s, they, they, the civic progress and other um, types in the city formed and, and asked for 1%. It's been that way ever since. It is sort of one of the lowest in terms of the 5,000 or so municipalities that, that have uh, uh, local earnings taxes. So from a, from a um, fairness, a fair tax perspective, I think it, it bodes you know, um, uh, not as a great impact. Then in two, the first time we had to vote on it was in April of 2011, and um, it got 88% of that vote initially. And then 2016, uh, I think 72 or 73 uh, percent of the vote came on. So those have been April elections, as when those have historically been set. This bill also sets the same date for that. Um, and if there aren't any questions to me about sort of that, I'd like Mr. Payne to kind of roll through the the presentation. Okay, we can we can we can move on to uh, Mr. Payne. Sure, Paul, Paul please proceed. Okay. Um... Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, what I'd like to do is actually pull up and share a screen uh, of the presentation that uh, Alderman Oldenburg was referencing here. So we can pull this up. Okay. Um, and, I, and I won't belabor every, every slide here. I, I know the sponsor has talked about a lot of this, but this is just some background. Again, um, since 2010, We've had to have, unfortunately, had to have this uh, referendum to re-up our earnings tax every five years. Um, uh, this will be the third time we've had to do that. Um, but in, in the mix of revenues that were received in the general fund, particularly, um, you can see that the earnings tax in the current, the current fiscal year's budget is 36% of the budget, uh, 481.6. That's a little bit higher than normal. It'd be around 35%, 34%, although, although this is a COVID-adjusted uh, budget that we have. So it is a little bit larger than what it normally would be as a percentage of the total. Um, in the last fiscal year that ended June 30th, uh, actual receipts, earnings tax totaled $175.8 million. And we have a, a, the other major sources being property taxes, 64 million, sales taxes of 53 million, the payroll tax of 42. We've got some franchise utility taxes of 52, uh, department user fees of 54, and the intergovernmental aid was about 30. Um, what that shows just basically how much, um, how, how important the earnings tax is to this combination of major general fund revenue sources. And when you look at our revenue structure, what you're trying to achieve is basically uh, a diverse base of revenue sources that actually can grow with the economy and a rate sufficient to maintain city services. So the, the structure of the revenue has been uh, intentionally set that way so that you have, you're not relying on, on any one particular source. Oh, over Excuse me? Okay. Oh, I, I thought I heard a question. Okay, um, uh, so that you're trying to create a diverse revenue structure so that you can, your, your revenue base is not term or reliant on any one source more than it needs to be. Um, also some other desirable characteristics of that, as, as the sponsor mentioned, 
uh, equity and fairness. In other words, it's not imposed heavily on those least able to pay. Ability to grow with the economy. It's reasonable in relation to the impact of economic activity and the ease of enforcement and collection. Uh, and of course, all of these have pluses. All of our revenues have pluses and minuses and strengths and weaknesses in, with those characteristics. But approximately 75% of the general revenue is distributed among the top five sources. Um, and it's, again, as, as I mentioned, it's structured so that it would be a diverse base that can actually grow with the economy. And one thing unique about the city of St. Louis is that it's a, uh, while it's geographically small footprint, it is a, has a regional reach. It serves as a home to all these other venues, uh, sports entertainment venues, as well as uh, cultural attractions. So that its revenue structure is also capturing not only its um, own, from its own population, but from the populations that come to visit um, and, and recreate and have business within the city. Um, again, the current rate uh, of 1% of earnings was established in 1959. Um, there is a corp, an individual portion as well as a corporate portion. The individuals, 1% of earnings of residents and non-residents of the city work done or, or services performed in the city. And the corporate portion, 1% of net profits is in businesses uh, conducting business in the city. And it breaks out to be about 18% is the corporate portion and about 82% is the individual holding portion. And as the sponsor mentioned, there are uh, multiple other cities which have earnings taxes. These are some of the, the larger cities in the country that do. Um, in comparing the growth rate of the earnings tax, particularly with some of our other larger major sources of revenue, Earnings tax is actually a bit more consistent and larger and stronger growth in, in, a, in a growing economy than the other two property taxes, sales tax. And you can see those rates there. Um, uh, earnings tax at three and a half to three to three and a half percent growth rate over the three, five, and 10 year periods. Property tax a little less than around 2%. And then sales tax has never been a strong grower for us. It's, it's um, either half a percent or a little over 1%. And as the largest source of general revenue, it's 176 million in FY20. Um, just to give you an idea, that is more than the whole general fund budget for the police department, actual expenditures for the police department in FY20. And it's about a, a little more than the entire equivalent of uh, a little more than that, that total expenditures for these services here, everything from the fire department, corrections, forestry, parks, streets, neighborhood uh, stabilization, et cetera. Um, so the earnings tax itself, um, any, lo any loss of the earnings tax would have a significant impact on the city's ability to provide any of these services. So what would it take to replace uh, something as large as the earnings tax? Well, if you took the equivalent of the property tax as a replacement, uh, current property tax receipts are estimated at, at, at $362 million. So, and that's at a rate of 8.19. Um, uh, to replace $175 million plus the earnings tax would require almost another $4 added to your property tax rate. And you can see by the illustrations here, what that would do for each of the various homeowners and business owners in the city. Um, that would range from a, a low of a, just under $1,000 for your homeowner of $100,000 house plus a car businesses would see an increase of at least 12, oh, close to $12,000 in that scenario. What about the sales tax as a replacement? Well, um, as I mentioned earlier, sales tax doesn't grow as much as earnings tax does historically. And it would also require a significant increase in the rate itself. Here's our current rate um, in the city. It includes the Board of Education as well as the state rate uh, there. We have a base rate of 9.679%. With a one cent bringing in just under $40 million, it would require another 4.4 4 .4 cents um, to generate that kind of in increase, to generate um, $175.1 million. Some of the other considerations about the earnings tax, obviously, the, the, and every year they bring this up when we meet with rating agencies, they, they always note it that we, the fact that we have to reauthorize it every, uh, every five years is, is sort of a credit negative. Uh, in their regard, in, in their view, 
Of course, the loss of the largest revenue source of the city would be something that would immediately call into question the city's credit uh, worthiness and stability. Of course, there's also a, a number of TIF finance developments that have already been uh, issued that would be impacted with the loss of that revenue as well. And then, uh, then that would also create the other just further challenges, the ongoing uh, challenge we face every year, as you guys know, in ways and means, uh, achieving the structural budget balances and addressing all the other needs that we have, including capital that we face every year. So uh, I cannot uh, under or overemphasize the uh, impact the earnings tax has on, on the city's budget. And um, that's about it that I have today. And uh, I'm available for any questions. Hello, all Roman Davis. Any questions of the speaker? Oh, no questions, thank you. All right, all member Carl. And yeah, Paul, just quickly, uh, first they could add my name to the uh, board bill. I have no problem with that. But if the voters voted this down, it's not instant, right? Isn't it like over five years that we have to come up with a solution? Yeah, it would be phased out over a 10 year period. So 10 years. You'd lose, lose one tenth of your revenue uh, each year until it accumulates up to the total elimination in your tenth. So, so it would stay in place for 10 years, just it, you know, minus 1% each or 10% each year. Yeah, so basically year one, you'd lose, let's say it's a $180 million base, you'd lose $18 million in your first year, and then year two, two would be $36 million, and then uh, with 54, and it, it just keep the loss of revenue. Would, you know, well, I, I, have, I have confidence in the voters that they'll pass this with no problem, but I just, I was, it was a curious thing, I guess it was a concern. Thank, thanks, Paul. All right, thank you, Alderman. As Alderman Howard joined us. No, all the one Tamika Hubbard has not joined us. With that, we'll move to all the one Murphy. Any questions of Mr. Payne? I know mine was asked and answered. Thank you. All right, all the woman Spencer. Any questions of Mr. Payne? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. And Yolanda, so I'm gonna call her because her and I. Oh, uh, all the boy, we need to uh, to mute. Thank you. All right, all the one Spencer, please proceed. There, uh, Mr. Payne. Uh, I, I know this presentation touches a little bit on the shift because of COVID. Um, do we have a do we have new budget estimates on the earnings tax and some of the other income streams? Uh, I know that the passage of this is going to become even more important. Um, I know that's outside of what we're discussing here today, but curious if you could update us on what that looks like. Actually, uh, I do. Uh, I posted on our website is the first quarter report that I issued to ENA back at uh, just. Uh, a week or so ago, uh, so it does have it does have those numbers. Uh, if you recall, remember we went through a couple of iterations about how to project revenue in this COVID pandemic. It was sort of a guessing game of sorts. Um, the bottom line has been that the revenues we've seen so far have declined by historic proportions. Uh, if there's any, uh, I mentioned in my memo, is there any positive news there? It's 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 at least for the rev major revenue sources so far in the first quarter, it was relatively close to the, the budget estimates, even though they were negative. Um, we have seen some other few, a few other items that, have, that are underperforming, for instance, uh, uh, franchise utility taxes. Uh, would be like uh, commercial electric utility receipts are down and airport receipts are down. Um, right now, uh, I had shown it was, it'd be like a nine, $10 million in that kind of territory uh, overall. Of course, knock on wood, that depends on what goes forward in, in terms of the pandemic. Um, it, it seems to be, but we're also underspending as well on, the, on, on mostly on the personnel side, we have a lot of vacancies. So it, it, right now it seems manageable, but again, uh, I, I caution anyone to, to take that um, as, as I guess the way I'd, I'd describe it is that it's a we're in a current and we're in a big storm right now. We're managing, but the storm is still raging. So we'll see how we proceed as the as the fiscal year progresses. Um, and 
but yeah, that information is available on the city's uh, website if you'd like more detail. All right, thank you, Paul. Alderman, any further questions? Alderman Spencer. No, I just wanted to add, uh, ask the sponsor if he would add me as a co-sponsor and offer my help in any way to help make sure this gets passed. Sure. All right, thank you. And then uh, Alderman Muhammad, any questions of Mr. Payne? None? All right. Good thing I understand sign language. Alderman Oldenburg, any questions? You are the sponsor, so we'll pass over you. <laughs> Alderman Boyd, any questions of Mr. Payne? No questions. All right. Alderman Shameen Clark Hubbard, any questions of Mr. Payne? No questions, but with Alderman Oldenburg's permission, I would like to be added as a co-sponsor as well. Okay. That seems to be fine with him. Can I... Can I uh, uh, ask that we do it in bank in the committee? Uh, out of committee. Okay, well, we'll get to that in one second, sir. All right. Okay, we have one more speaker yet to go. All right, uh, we have uh, Mr. Jerry Conley. Are you with us? Uh, you signed on to speak, please, sir. Jerry? Yes, I'm with you. Can you hear me okay? Right. Yes, we can. Please proceed, sir. Please uh, state your name for the record. Yes, uh, my name is Jerry Connolly. I'm a resident of the 8th Ward. Um, just to have a few brief comments. Uh, basically, I'm speaking in support of this bill. I'd like to echo uh, the concerns expressed by Paul Payne in terms of uh, budget director, in terms of if this were to go away, uh, the negative, dramatic negative consequences it would have for the city finances. Um, one observation that I, I'd like to share with the Ways and Means Committee is that the payroll tax the half percent uh, payroll tax paid by for-profit entities um, lags, you know, significantly behind. I believe it's about thirty-six million dollars in the current budget, and I, I really think it'd be time to approach the large nonprofit institutions to look at some way that they can, you know, contribute the payment in lieu of taxes to boost uh, that revenue we're getting from employers, because you know, basically. You know, if everyone was contributing um, be at the same volume for the payroll, we'd be looking at about $85 million coming in. And right now we have about $35 million coming in every year. Um, the only other item I'd, I'd want to add is really to encourage the committee to, whenever legislation is before, um, before them, regardless of if it's a board bill uh, or a resolution that the public have the opportunity to testify um, you know, as an open public hearing. And I, I believe that's, you know, being facilitated in certain cases, but I'd really encourage you all to uh, facilitate that um, for all legislation that comes through the committee. Thank you, those are all my comments. All right, thank you very much, sir. Uh, uh, just in a general, anyone have any questions of Mr. Conley while we have him here? I'll just uh, raise a hand if you do. Okay, none being present, all right. Thank you, Mr. Conley, very much, sir. Thank you. All right, uh, there has been a, a, a motion. Uh, well, I, I entertain a motion. Mr. Vercaro, would you like to reiterate your uh, motion? Yeah, I'd like to do this in, I would like to make a motion that we do it in bank out of committee. Uh, yeah. Okay, Hearing no objections then. We have uh, decided to make board bill 151 in bank with the Ways and Means Committee. Sharita, please yeah. take care of that. And with that, uh, Mr. Payne, Mr. Connolly, I thank you both for your time uh, and your interest in this. And board members, I will now entertain a motion in regard to Board Bill 151. So move. Uh, please make a motion. Oh. I'll make the motion to move. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was going to second your motion. Okay, you guys will we'll play the back and trick some later. Someone please make a motion. <laughs> Well, let's, let's end the love fest. Come on. <laughs> Shamin's making the motion. I'm seconding right. it. So, I make okay. the motion to move the board bill. Please give me a number, please. Board bill 151. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I make the motion to move board bill 151. Uh, entertain a second. Uh, okay, we have a motion and a second. With that, uh, Sharita, are you taking over or Mr. Clerk? Whoever, please take call the roll. Alderwoman Davis. Aye. Alderman Vaquero. 
Aye. Alderwoman Howard. Alderwoman Hubbard. Alderwoman Murphy. Aye. Alderwoman Spencer. Alderman Muhammad. Aye. Alderman Odenberg. Aye. Alderwoman Boyd. Aye. Alderwoman Clark Hubbard. Aye. Chairman Bomber. Aye. Alderwoman Howard. Alderwoman Hubbard. Alderwoman Spencer. Eight Ava. All right. By your vote, we have passed out Board Bill 151 out of the Ways and Means Committee with a due pass recommendation. Uh, with that, uh, we will move on to item three, excuse Alderman. We'll excuse the Alderman for uh, Alderman Howard, Alderman Tamika Hubbard uh, for her necessary absence. And I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I will make a motion we adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay, it's, 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 it's,